I recently animated this head turn for an animation challenge on Noble Fugal Studios' channel. So today, I'd like to take you through my process. Hello friends, and welcome to a look at the process I went through for animating the head turn. So I decided that I wanted to use Pi the Pig from the upcoming Castle Dark series on Noble Frugal's channel. So the first thing I did was to watch a few videos where he'd been shown, including this animatic. And watching it, I tried to work out some of his anatomy and position of his features. So I took notes while I was watching, and then, grabbing pencil and paper, I started to practice drawing him. And the first thing I noticed was that his nose started halfway down his face. So after drawing a circle for his head, I drew a cross to find the centre of his face, and then drew the nose, and then with his eyes just above them, and eyebrows raised to one side to make the pie symbol. His cheeks started at the same place as his nose, but I drew them a little bit small here, so I practised again later. And then ears starting at the very top of his head, with the bottom of the line starting at his eyebrows, dipping a bit lower and then curling to join at the top. And that seemed to be the rough layout for his face. So I practiced again on another head. But this time I tried to draw his features slightly larger. I tend to draw features too small, really. So I tried to make them fit a bit better. And then I tried a side view. And having noticed these first few positions for his features, it made it so much easier. The only difference being from the side, his snout links to the bottom of his head with a slightly curved line. And then behind his cheeks, he's got three small freckles. And these seem to be on both sides of his head. And then I tried one last pose with Pi looking angry. Just to change his expression a little bit and get more practice. After all, I'm only drawing a small head turn, it's not a large animation. And overall, I was pleased with how the expressions came out. So finally, I tried a full body drawing, just to get a feel for the size of him. So I noticed in a lot of the sketches in the animatic, he's drawn with a smaller circle at the top of his body, and then kind of a medium sized one at the bottom. With his arms just sitting at the sides, with a kind of hoof looking hand, I'm not quite sure how to describe that, so I tried to draw roughly what I'd seen in the animatics. And then his legs were drawn very simply, without too much shape to them. And then these very large toes at the bottom. But as it happened in the final animation, I didn't actually draw his full body. But again, it was still good practice to draw this. So with one final attempt at drawing his face, I gave him kind of a quizzical look, I think he still looked like the same character, so I was pretty happy with it. So there we go. A little bit of a practice of drawing pie on paper. And drawing on paper did make a difference than drawing on the computer. Although at this stage I wasn't sure of the pose I put him in for the final turn. But drawing this was a good excuse to draw, and to not have the benefits of the drawing features of the program or an undo feature. So that was enough practice on paper, so next I went to the computer. So I'll take you through the creation of this project, stage by stage, starting with my initial sketches, as you can see here. And I thought about having Pi with his back to the main part of the scene, and then throwing in the mustachioed apple, which is the logo of Noble Frugal Studios' channel. And then when it hits him on the back, I want him to duck a little bit, then stretch out, and then start to turn round, face behind him, and then settle back into a resting pose. So here's that again. He gets hit with the apple, shrinks down, extends up, and then turns around to see who threw it, and settles into a pose. So I'll show the rest of the stages of the process by utilising a feature of my OpenTunes and Tahoma 2D backup tool. And that'll give me the ability to restore saved versions of the project and then to view them into Homer. But if you haven't seen it before, I made this backup tool that works with both OpenTunes and Tahoma 2D. 
and once running it'll take a backup of your project folder each time you save your scene. And when you reach important stages in your project you can name those and at any time remove all the others leaving only the stages that you need and that's what I've done here. So now I can only see those backups in the restore page and on disk in the backups folder. But if you'd like to use this application then wander over to my Gumroad site that's gumroad.com anims and there's a link in the description and this is where you'll find all of my projects like my auto lip sync tool for open tunes into Homer some extra drawing guidelines using the safe areas and an open tunes project and images for this pool house project and with them is my backup tool and if you select it and click to the right you'll see a video showing you exactly how to use it. So back to the project. So if I go to the backup tool and on the restore tab choose the next stage and that is the first sketches before timing. So I'll select that and choose restore this and at the bottom in the messages it tells you that's been restored and then back into Homer I can either choose to reload that scene from here or I can just hit revert scene from the file menu and this throws away any changes that you've made and loads the same scene again from disk. So now I can see the next set of drawings where on top of those initial rough rough sketches I've now drawn a slightly neater picture of Pi to give me more of an idea of how he looks. So again the apple comes in from the right, it hits him on his back and he shrinks down and then he expands up and then looking grumpy he starts to turn around to see who threw it he overextends here and on frame 8 he then settles back into his normal pose. So this gave me a chance to draw a rough idea of how Pi looks knowing full well that I'll redraw him later neat so I can just start to get his features in roughly the right place. So then the next stage was to add some rough timing and this involved just extending the drawings to last longer to try and get a feel for the time that it takes to show between drawings and to make it easier to time the apple differently to pi I drew the apple on a separate level here so if we take a look at that timing the apple comes in hits pi it reacts and then turns round one more time So already we're starting to get a feel for how the animation looks. And you may notice that since the last drawings I've added a few more features. So I've added the rough position of where his arms will be as well. And then next I drew this neater. So if we take a look at that. So it's still approximately the same timing and I may have just adjusted it slightly but I drew these on a new level over the top of the old drawings using them as a basis of where I wanted him but neatening up the features a little bit so for instance here you can see I've drawn a little bit of his face next to his snout but leaving a small gap in the line just to signify where the side of his face is but to not have a continual line going around his face next to the snout. And I've also drawn the ear without having the complete circle of the head. So overall it's starting to look much much neater, ready for drawing the neat ink lines over the top. And the neater your sketches, the easier the ink stage will be. And that's the next version of the project, so if we take a look at that. And here you can see I've drawn Pi using a neat ink line. So that's the normal brush on a smart raster level using a solid black colour. Again, if we play that. And it's still the same drawings of Pi, just drawn neatly. And I've not added any extra movement to the apple yet, so it still shows the same rough timing. If we take a look at the next version, this is where I've added colour. And as well as adding colour, you can see that I've added movement to the apple. And I did this using the animate tool. You can see on the top column here, I've got keys 
to set the movement of the apple and the rotation. You can see that it rotates as he comes in, and when he bounces off Pi, it continues to rotate as he moves down in an arc shape. And if I had more time, I would have practiced more with the motion path for this, which would have been ideal for it. But I only really had one afternoon to complete the animation, so I did it the easy way there's a new how to do. And like a lot of things in Open Tunes and Tahoma, there's more than one way to get the same outcome. So next, I added the background. And as well as adding the background, I believe I also added one or two extra in-betweens. Not as many as I'd like to have added, but still it makes the animation much smoother. So for the background, I added one drawing of the brickwork behind Pi, and on a column in front of Pi, I've added a vignette effect. And for that I just used an airbrush and painted black around the edges of the screen. As you can see here. And then I reduced the opacity so it wasn't a strong an effect. And then in the scene settings I ticked the box at the bottom which enabled that transparency effect to be rendered out. And then we've got the final version of the scene. And in this I just added some shadows. I did this on a new level. As you can see here. And then use a matte effect to include the shadows only where Pi was drawn. So if I preview that, you see the shadow is just clipped to his body. And then also I added a blur effect to blur out the background, just so that Pi stood out a little bit and looked a little bit clearer. So if you take a look at that in the normal viewer. You'll see that I also added an extra drawing to show him blinking and also added a little sound effect to it. So if we take a look at the full animation, including all the effects, it looks a little bit like this. So that's a quick look at the stages for this project, and I hope you enjoyed that and maybe took some ideas from the workflow for yourself. And it was a lot of fun to work on. I didn't have as much time as I would have liked though, or I'd have added more in-betweens, or even used the plastic tool to add a little extra movement to Pi. And I've yet to find out what Sebastian from Noble Frugal Studios thought of it, but I'm proud of what I've made here. And as with a lot of small projects that I work on, I learned a few things from making this, and I'm pleased I saved these versions as I worked, because it gives me something to look back on. So I'll be back soon with another video, so why not join me then? And if you come across an animation challenge that looks like it could be fun, why not give it a go? You'll probably enjoy yourself, and you'll definitely do better than you expected. And that's a guarantee. Mm -hmm.